This thing was on, wasn't it? I hope so. miles northwest of Savannah in a little community known as Ebenezer. It lies on the banks of the Ebenezer Creek and the Savannah River. It was established one year after, the, after Savannah was established when a group of religious refugees known as the Salzburgs arrived from Europe and Salzburg was the name of what's now known as Austria and when they arrived, General James Oglethorpe suggested that they settle out here. And in 1734, the little community was established. It's a beautiful area with a mixture of tall pines uh, on the dry, sandy areas. And the swamps bordering the creek contain excellent examples of water tupelo and virgin bald cypress bottom lands. Ebenezer thrived as a sort of utopic uh, community until the state trustees lifted the ban on slavery and limited land ownership. Geez, these bugs are bad. I'm going to smoke a cigarette. Maybe that'll keep the bugs away a little bit. But e Ebenezer thrived as a sort of utopic uh, community until the state trustees lifted the ban on slavery and limited land ownership. At that point in time, the community just began to sort of hold its own because it could not compete with the plantations and their cash crops. Then came the Revolutionary War. Because of the geographic location, Ebenezer was a prime defense point for Savannah. With the coastal defenses below Savannah and Ebenezer to the north along the Savannah River, it was a much sought after uh, control point for the British. After the British invasion in 1778, the British forces were in control of the area. And after the war, it, like the city of Sunbury that we visited a couple of weeks ago, would be left in ruin by the British. The little area is still sparsely populated today, but it's mostly remembered for the part it played during the Civil War.
64, Sherman's troops were making their way southeast out of Atlanta towards Savannah. They were broken into four columns, commanded by Generals Osterhaus, Blair, Williams, and Kilpatrick. This movement would become known as Sherman's March to the Sea. The march to the sea would leave farms decimated in its wake all along the march as the troops moved through the areas. They would free the slaves. Some of these newly freed slave men would become what's called pioneers. And the pioneers would travel ahead of the troops, making the sandy roads passable for Sherman's troops and military equipment. When they would shore up the roads, and the troops and the equipment would travel through. But there was another group that would travel with the troop movements. This group would be called the Contrabands, made up mostly of women and children and older men who could not work. The Contrabands would become a burden to the Sherman's troops and their commanders. The troops had to feed them and they slowed the troop movements to a crawl. This made following Sherman's orders to get to Savannah as quickly as possible almost impossible. Not being able to take the Union troops head on, the Confederate cavalry commanded by Major General Joseph Wheeler would hit the Union troops from behind and further irritate the troop movement. Once the Union was approaching Savannah, the four columns were joined by another coming out of Augusta. The column was commanded by Brigadier General Jefferson C. Davis, not to be confused with President Jeff Davis. As this column approached Savannah, it became, it, it came upon Ebenezer Creek here and it was imperative that General Davis get his troops across the creek as soon as possible. The Union troops were on a built-up road with swamps on both sides, and to, the, and to the rear was General Wheeler's cavalry moving in quickly. It was what we call a choke point, and Davis had to move quickly. The pioneers and the troops quickly built a pontoon bridge, much like this one, and proceeded to cross the creek to safety and the additional uh, four columns, and there was always safety in numbers. But the decision that General Davis would now make would, come da would, would go down in history. General Davis posted guards on the bridge and told the contrabands to wait until all the troops and equipment were over the bridge before proceeding across. Once his troops were across, he gave the order to go ahead and dismantle the bridge. This left the contrabands on the wrong side of the creek. Some estimates have the total number of contrabands uh, at between 4,000 and 5,000 women and children and the elder. When Wheeler's cavalry arrived, chaos ensued. His cavalry began slaughtering the contrabands, many of whom rather faced the swollen creek than faced the Confederate troops. There is not a total number of, but several hundred souls perished in the waters of the Ebenezer Creek and those that didn't go into the water, well, they were either killed by the Confederates or returned to the plantations as runaway slaves. But General Davis counted on this being swept under the rug. That didn't happen. Union Colonel Charles D. Kerr of the 16th Illinois who would later help raise an outcry over Davis's decision, wrote that with cries of anguish and despair, men and women and children 
rushed by the hundreds into the uh, turbid stream and many were drowned before our eyes. From what we learned afterwards of those who remained on land, their fate at the hands of Wheeler's troops were scarcely to be preferred. Consequence, consequently, it's hard to know how many drowned and how many got across, because some did, and how many were picked up by the Confederate cavalry. Wheeler reported thousands, said Charlie Crawford, president of the Georgia Batterfields Association, who has actually toured the site. Now, Edward Stanton was the Union Secretary of War, and having heard the news, made an unannounced visit to Savannah before Sherman could march north into the Carolinas. He wanted answers. To try and smooth things over and continue on as quickly as possible since he had the momentum, Sherman gave the 15th order. It stated that 400,000 acres were be to split up into 40 acre parcels and distributed amongst the pioneers and any survivors. This is where the saying 40 acres and a mule came from. That order was approved by President Lincoln, but then later rescinded by Democrat President Andrew Johnson. Now, President Johnson would later become the very first president of the United States to be impeached. Some say it was for removing Edward Stanton from the office of Secretary of War for no reason. General Davis would never be reprimanded or charged in any manner for this. And Ebenezer Cree would return to being just a small community, forgotten by time. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so that you know when we do uploads. Please, get out and see some history. Your patronage to the state and national parks can be more rewarding than you'll ever know. Freaking bugs. Remember, every trip starts with a step, and that step, it starts with you.